Okay, we'll get started for our second talk of this session on Map Server. So our next speaker is going to be Lars Schilberg from Saab in uh, Sweden. Uh, Lars is going to share with us a set of uh, tips and tricks for optimizing your maps with Map Server. Thank you. Uh, originally, it had been Jeff and, uh, and Mike that had been doing these tr tips and tricks. So I, I do it a little differently today. Uh, I will just have two use cases and I work, will work, through, uh, work them through a little more. I will talk about complex road shield labeling and how to optimize this use case. And of course, it involves a lot of G$ OGR stuff. So be aware, this will be quite technical. And finally, I will talk about tight tile indexes uh, for raster maps. And both these things are things that I, I don't know if they're really new, but it's things that I came up with during last winter. So my background is that I'm a land surveyor, I'm PhD in cartography. I used to be a grass developer and a user in late 80s and beginning of 90s. Uh, I started to use Map Server for the first time in 2001, 2002 frame. Uh, I used it then for a big spare time project. Then I was away from Map Server. I work as a company specialist for digital maps in my company, that is Saab, the airplane manufacturer, Saab. And what I've done in recent years is uh, the SmackM project on GitHub. I don't know how many of you have seen that project. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, not very many. Actually, it's uh, C charts with Map Server, and uh, and how to configure uh, Map Server to read S57 files and render them really fast. Uh, and my, I really love to do beautiful WMS services. So I love map rendering. And for instance, this is an example here with, from SmackM. It's a cooperation between Simon from MapGears, well, the MapGears team, uh, where we did proper uh, uh, symbology for lighthouses, for instance. Uh, the, we had a couple of different versions, and this is now in there with the optimized version. I won't talk about that today, I will talk about complex road shield labeling. Many data sets contain multiple road shields for certain segments of roads. So you see here, uh, you have, I think you call it code sharing also. And most online maps don't display it. And my goal was then to do this automatically with proper stacking. And I know the map server has the abilities to do it. Uh, some examples here from the National Land Survey of Sweden. Uh, you could stack it along the road, you could stack it perpendicular, or you can stack them on top of each other. And the example I will show you today is stacking them horizontally. No, vertically, right. So this is what the data looks like. So you, you have then a road uh, number one, uh, alternative road number, and a third alternative road number in some cases. Most of the time, this could be empty, or it's, most of the cases, it's ju just one road shield. So to... Uh, I placed, I have small extracts of my, uh, the, this, uh, but I have then, uh, I placed them on a GIST GitHub, so you could go down, uh, go to my account after the presentation and look at the full examples. So the map, 
map file syntax for doing this is in my first version that I did, that I did many years ago, is that you have a class with three, three shields stacked. You have to have a first expression, a class expression, and then a la la uh, label expression. And um, then comes the background of the shield, and then ca comes the actual shield that's placed on top of the, the background. Uh, so this is, uh, of course, if you're talking about performance, it's always a matter of filtering how much information that goes into the rendering. So you have actually three main ways to filter data. First, you could uh, filter data with the filter uh, command on the class uh, on the map layer, uh, map level, and then you have expression. You could have class expressions, and finally label expressions. So this is then regexp. For instance, I would like to find out a road number that equals e and one character. And that's because I want to have the right size of the shield. So what I do here is that I end up with a lot of label expressions. It's quite massive. So if you look at this file afterwards, it's I think just doing these labels are it's about 800 rows of uh, map uh, map file code. Uh, so you, you have the case for two characters uh, and they have to tell you most European uh, road shields are green for European main roads and then blue or other colors for secondary roads. So in Sweden it's blue for, uh, blue for the secondary roads but they still can be main roads, and they could be up to number 500. But I should not display them if they're above 500. So we end up with a lot of expressions here. And so I, as you saw before, it was ultrafoto, uh, and I rendered the roads and so, some other roads and then the road shields. And it takes almost half a second. And it's out of a total of 900 milliseconds. And it's a little too much. By the way, you, you, you get this kind of information if you run maps or with de debug mode, usually three or five. So what to do? I found out this is working. I get nice results, but the rendering takes too much time. Uh, half of the re uh, rendering time is then spent on the road shield labeling. So I, my hypothesis here is that uh, the expression statements are very costly. Uh, so there must be uh, some way to improve it. So if I could then determine beforehand how we, uh, to just get it down to three expressions. I could then pre-process uh, what color it should be and how wide the shield should be. You see the shields are wider the more text there is. Uh, so uh, I made a script in OGR to OGR and this could this is done with shape files, but it's since it's GDLOGR, it would be the same if it's a package or postkeys or uh, so the full example of the script for doing this pre-processing you find here. Road science processing. So what I do here is um, I take the original file and output to a new shape file. And I use the SQLite syntax in my expression. So we will look then at what I do in this SQL expression. 
and it's uh, 25 or 30 rows of code. <laughs> so what I found out is that uh, if you have SQLite, you could then do the same regexp in SQLite. So I then pre-process, for instance, here I pre-process what shield size I should have. So I actually determine what the what, what the symbol should be, if it's a narrow symbol or a wide symbol. And I pre-process uh, uh, the color, yes, the color. So I know if it's going to be blue or green. And finally, I also pre-process which case it is. Is it three shields? two shields or one shield. And I also check that it's not empty in the, so I filter away all the empty ones. So, uh, oops. And then of course, when you have done this, don't forget with your normal optimizations. You, you could optimize the table size. Uh, you could optimize on creating an index on the most used variable and create the spatial <coughs> index again. That's kind of standard, I hope. So we end up with the row data with new variables. So it's the symbol for box one, two, three, the colors, and the number of signs. So now I have a, can write a new map file. So this has only three expressions. Expressions case three shields and, and so on. So it's the same then expression with two and one. So let's run it again. So now I'm running it with a new version and I'm down to 24 milliseconds. And the total rendering is down to a little more than half a second. So I think that's a quite good improvement. So I was very satisfied with this pre-processing for the road shields. So 24 milliseconds compared to 400. So that's kind of nice. So it worked. It's cutting down the rendering time 15 to 20 times for that layer. And next level of complexity is to display road names at the same time, but I didn't do that. Actually, I was displaying the road names at the same time as the roads and then for the lower levels. So, and that worked, then label cache takes care of the collisions and so on. Um, next uh, one here is raster tile indexes. Uh, if you get a lot of rasters, usually you r just run g.t index on them, but it's a little slow in some cases. So here I have a big file that I got over Finland, and but I only have data in certain parts, so, and it, they were quite big, the, uh, the raster images as well. So I did uh, do retiling on them, and I then remove empty areas, and I remove parts where I don't have data. So I made a process in GDAL, of course. Here is another case, uh, raster images over Norway and Sweden. Uh, it was transparent in the, where I show it in black there. So the full code example here for that is found here. Import raster retile. So I did a own version of retiling with mask because uh, GDAL retile is not uh, handling uh, 
no data properly. Zarbri wrote it in Bash. You could find it in 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 the on my gist. I removed empty tiles. You just ran. You have to unset no data. You run statistics on it. If it's standard deviation zero, then you remove the tile. Uh, and then I trim the tiles. And I create a mask with GDAL calc uh, around where there's data. And then I make a polygon around the mask with GDAL polygonize. And then I trim away. So I then read the extents from OGR uh, uh, on the vector that I, I did around. And then I check if it's the, the extent on, on the original file. And I can then compare them with binary calculator here. This is all bash, by the way. So OGR extent and GDAL extent are bash, bash functions. And so if it's the same, then I keep the file. Otherwise, I GDAL translate with a new project window. OK. And I do a new GDAL T index and do a shape tree on it to have a spatial, uh, well, to, to have index, a spatial indexing on it. And of course, this was about optimization. So this, I was doing this on quite big data sets and running GDAL and OGR commands you gain a lot if you use the parallel uh, functionality in, in, in Linux. So I use GNU Parallel, and then I could set up that use all the available processors. So here, for instance, I've set up plus one. So I'm using, for instance, I, when I was running these scripts, I, I I had a, a server with 16 cores, so I, I set it up plus one, so it's always one job in the queue. So I could speed up that pre-processing a lot. So what happened here is that when I didn't have the tight tile indexes, so for instance, when I was around the borders here, uh, <coughs> Very often, it had to read both the Swedish and the Norwegian data set. But when I have these tight tile indexes, that happened very uh, more seldom. So actually, there's a speed improvement by 100% because it, it doesn't have to open the, the other country's rest files. Well, if you really at the border, it depends on how tight you do the uh, tie, uh, do the retiling, but rendering becomes much faster, noticeable. I don't have any figures, but uh, it was a big improvement. And this process can be done both on palette, RGB or RGBA. It's mostly the checking for the empty tiles that is different here. Final tip, doesn't have to do with map server, but I, I thought I should mention it anyway. I just found this command line, CS to CS. I don't know, how many of you are using that? Yeah, quite 10 or so, yeah. That's very handy when, when you author map files because you, I, I author map files in many different projections. So if you're going to paste in the extents of something or so I just love that. And I found out this winter. I don't know, I don't know why I've missed it before. Maybe it's the, because it's one of the command line tools in uh, Proy. So that was my two use cases. <laughs>